hard to talk about how good Jesus is when he's not good to you. Oh, no, you may not say that. You may not say that publicly because that's like anathema. You know, you know, it's kind of like saying, I don't like my children. <laughs> but they're your children, so you can't say that. But that doesn't mean you like their behaviors. And so there has to be a cooperative mission that you experience just like Jesus did. Not in the same way, obviously, you don't need to be crucified as Jesus was on a cross, but you need to die to yourself. And so I put many scriptures there to show you that as Jesus died, and as he was resurrected, and as he was ascended, and as he had to demonstrate dominion, so do you. Why? Because we are the walking, breathing representation of Christ in this earth. And so as he is, so are we in this world. And so your handout should say John 14, because that's where we're going to go. So let's, let's first start. I want you to notice this. And, and we talked about this. I think this is how we ended last week. In the 13th chapter, in the 31st and 32nd verse, it says, So when he had gone out, I'm in John chapter 13, when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. You'll see, if you look at those two verses, 31 and 32, this word glory or glorified repeated five times. It's amazing because we're at the point where Judas left. Everything was in motion for the arrest, the trial, the humiliation, the condemnation, the beating, the crucifixion, and the burial of Christ. And he's talking about glory. Glory means honor. So what does this mean? It means that Jesus is speaking, as Acts said, about the predetermined counsel of God, that God had already predetermined that certain things would have to happen, and this was simply part of the process. So he was not preoccupied of the pain and the agony, but on the glory. And so you see clearly the differentiation between the world's thinking and what should be the child of God's thinking. How so? The world sees the cross as humiliation. The world sees the cross as disgrace. The world sees the cross as a curse. But for believer, uh, for the believer, the love of Jesus through the cross had to be revealed in a new way. That's where we left off last week. That when Jesus died, it revealed something that wasn't revealed in his life. It wasn't completed in his life. How so? Remember when Jesus said in John chapter 12, he says, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone or remains only a single seed. But if it dies, he's giving an illustration because he's talking about his own death. It produces many seeds. You might want to write down John chapter 12, 24 through 26. In other words, a life that dies and rises from the dead speaks to a love that's restorative. It speaks to a love that heals. Can you think about how the witness of Martha and Mary went to a new level after they saw their brother dead and then alive again? Do you actually think that they would stop talking about Jesus? I believe that they would talk about him for the rest of their life. Because they saw 
new life from someone who was dead. That's you. You are a walking, breathing representation of new life that was dead. You ought to give God the praise right there. Hallelujah. So, so, so now this, this death is showing power over death, which means power over weaknesses, which means power over sin, power over things that used to hold you down. Because if he could raise you up from the dead, he can raise you up from anything. Shout hallelujah. That's why the scripture says there's nothing impossible for God. There's nothing too hard for God. There was a question that one text says, is there anything too hard for God? And that's why in the 33rd verse he says, little children, he makes this transition, I must go. I won't be with you much longer. You will look for me and I as I said to the Jews, meaning the others that were not part of him and his immediate 12, where I'm going, you cannot come. So now I say this to you. No doubt they were devastated. Why? Because they left everything to follow Christ. They were very confident based upon his victorious walk for those three and a half years that he was going to be the Messiah. He was going to bring in the victory over the Roman government. He would take political control as the Messiah. And now he's saying he's, at, he's got to leave. 